Did you know Sweden gets more than half of all its energy from renewables? Well, that's why Real Economy is kicking off its fifth year of the show freezing here in Stockholm. I'm Mai Tracy the Roman, and I'm here to find out how do the Swedes stay warm while leading the energy transition in Europe and aiming to be carbon neutral by 2045. Change can be really scary when so many jobs in Europe's many regions are dependent on coal. But it's inevitable, as the Swedes would tell you, considering how dependent their economy was on fossil fuels. And it's even more inevitable when you're competing in a globalized world and the giants are transitioning to green energy as well. Now, to keep up, Europe's countries have transition targets they have to meet by 2020, but many countries are, well, lagging behind. So Damon Emling set out to understand what's holding people back in countries like Poland. You don't have to look far here in Poland's southern Silesia region to see how reliant this country is on burning coal to generate power. It's mining territory too, this stuff providing jobs for generations of workers. 80% of Poland's power comes from coal. That means a lot of jobs dependent on it and a reluctance to change. Marek Wisterik is a former miner and is torn. I think we have to use our wealth of coal. I'm from a coal mining family, but I know that we have to facilitate change because of pollution and our climate. And things are changing. Marek steered his eldest son towards a high school specializing in green energy. The environment is very important to me because where I live, I don't need to smoke cigarettes. Just by breathing, it's like smoking 10 packets of cigarettes a day. But my generation will make a change. We're starting to do that. Despite the bleak weather, this solar farm is harnessing the sun. Funded by EU regional development funds, it's a sign that even Poland has to slowly go green. By 2020, 15% of Poland's energy needs to come from renewables. In 2016, it was 11.3% of energy use. With Poland still keen to use coal, researchers are trying to make it cleaner. At this EU-funded lab, they're developing gasification technologies for industry. Gasification of coal is better than conventional burning because it makes it possible to reduce environmental impact of the coal utilization by removing contaminants such as sulfur and mercury, for example. This old mine is now a museum in Silesia's regional center, Kasowice, gripping onto the past, as some call for a much faster energy transition. There are a lot of enthusiastic uh, people that start to use different kind of renewable energy. If uh, our government uh, will let them to to be active in this way, uh, the situation will change uh, very fast, I think. To Damon's point, we've accomplished a pretty mean feat right here in Europe, where we have managed to double our renewable energy use in just the last 12 years. Now, here are a few more things you may not have known about Europe's energy transition. Did you know the energy we waste in Europe could power all our buildings' needs? or that energy-efficient products could save families up to 500 euros a year. The technology to make that happen is getting cheaper. And more than a quarter of the innovations for new tech and renewables are made by European companies, making it possible for one wind turbine to power 1,500 homes, or help solar power travel from sunny southern Europe to the north, whose wind can power the south too and the ocean at Europe's doorstep could power 10% of all our demand. Sounds great, right? But it all comes at a cost. We know that European countries have some strong disagreements about the transition targets for 2030. Not everyone began the move as early as the Swedes or have the financial clout or the ability to convince voters and unions. But the Swedes do have a clue of the challenges and solutions to transitioning. So I'm going to get us a few ideas from the Swedish energy minister, Ibrahim Balin. Minister, we set you a challenge of bringing an object that represents 
energy transition to you and to Sweden, what is it? Well, I, bring, I brought a bathtub. I'm born in, 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 in southeast of Turkey, a rural village. Taking a bath with your family, in my case, three siblings, my parents, my grandparents, and my uncle's family, well, it was always a challenge. If you're in the beginning, it was too hot. If you are in, in, in the end, it was not only cold, it wasn't that clean either. So, and coming from that to, to, to a society like Sweden, a very modern society, where you could have this at the tip of your fingers. Uh, an average Swede who takes a bath or, or a shower today will get his water from, uh, heated from almost 97% renewable energy. But not everyone in Europe can afford uh, what you accomplished, i.e. the country accomplished. What we have been doing for the last, with the introduction of carbon tax, with the introduction of a lot of, of measures and, and requirements that are, at the time, were, were, were seen as very strict, is that we have also enhanced the competitiveness of our industry, of our economy. Coal is not anymore the cheapest way of producing electricity or energy. Solar is. This year, we are seeing offshore wind being built without any subsidies. So I think for, for those countries who are, are still arguing for, for, for fossil fuels, for coal, from an economic point of view, I cannot understand it anymore. Maybe it's political, maybe it's the vote bank, it's jobs that need retraining, I they don't have the money? I think so, but you have to see that there is also lots and lots of jobs coming when you are doing the transition. Let me take the example of my bath, uh, bathtub here. Sweden at the time were using a lot, we were importing huge amounts of oil to burn. Obviously, when we have made that transition, it has also created tens of thousands of local jobs because, because today we are using residuals from the forestry. Things that were at the time seen just as waste. As a politician, you have also to see not only the jobs that you have today, I'm totally convinced that those jobs will go away anyway. A final question to you, if you had to give one piece of advice to the countries lagging behind, in one sentence, what would it be? Look back in history. When has ever a country been developed with old technologies, when you take new, uh, more efficient, in this, in this case, more clean technologies have, have emerged. Can I have my telephone, please? One of the best examples came just 10 years ago. Right. At the time when this came, you had the company with a 40% share of the world market. They didn't believe in this. In the end, do you want to be the iPhone or do you want to be the Nokia of the future? Minister, thank you so very much you. for your insights and thank you for having us back on your airwaves for a fifth year. We'll catch you again in about two weeks' time.